Today, I've got five tips for you here in DaVinci Resolve that help speed up your workflow. They're things that I use all the time, and I think you might find them helpful. Today's video is sponsored by Storyblocks, who, by the way, has some awesome DaVinci Resolve templates that they just launched a few days ago, which is just another way to speed up your workflow here in Resolve. We'll take a look at that later, but for now, let's jump into these five tips. Number one, one, one. So tip number one is just to quickly set up all of your bins here in DaVinci Resolve. What I'd like to do is organize all of my assets on my external hard drive. My basic file structure on my hard drive looks like this. I have audio, draft video, final video, footage, graphics, and then any other folders that I might need. Now, instead of going through each one of these folders and bringing in the media in that folder, I can just grab the top level folder and bring that right into DaVinci Resolve and it's gonna set up all of the folders for me. I'm gonna drag it and drop it into my bin section here under master and it's gonna add in all of those files and folders for me in one drop, one drag and drop. If I just close these guys up here, you can see here's all of my folders and if, for example, I come to the footage folder here and I look at my stock footage, we can see all of my stock footage here is brought into DaVinci Resolve. I've got everything that I need. I don't have to drag things and drop them individually. Everything is brought in at once, assuming you had it all on your hard drive and it was ready to go. Number, number two. Two, two, two. Tip number two here is one that I do in every single video, and that is sync up my good video with my good audio. But I always keep my video and my audio in separate bins. And here's a trick that I just learned recently. Check this out. So I am in the edit tab here in DaVinci Resolve. And if we take a look at my two bins here, I have a video bin, which if I jump in there is my video clip. And then I've got an audio bin where I keep my audio. So I like to organize things and keep them separate. But when you wanna sync up your video and your audio, they have to be in the same spot, right? Or do they? They actually don't. So what I can do is select my top level bin. And now you can see my two folders there, but if I use my uh, shift or command or control key to select the video and the audio folder, now I can see both of these items here. And in order to sync up my good audio with my good video, I can just select them both, right click, come down to sync audio based on waveform, Resolve will do its thing. And now we have our good audio synced up with our good video. So if I click on just the video folder, select my clip, right click, Come down to clip attributes. And if we take a look under the audio section here, we can see right now link channel one and link channel two. And if I click the drop down, you can see we still have our embedded audio channels there, but our audio is now linked. And that's a great one because I used to go and put them both in the same bin and then have to separate them back out. I didn't realize you could just select two bins at once, see all your files, sync everything up. You're good to go. You can stay organized. So that one is huge. I really like that one. And I use it in every single video that I make. Another way that you can save some time when you're working on your projects is to use templates. And Storyblocks just released a whole ton of awesome DaVinci Resolve templates on their website. Now you're gonna be able to create better videos with faster, customizable DaVinci Resolve templates. And they really help give your video a professional look. Here's what it looks like to create a cool little sequence using one of their templates. So the first thing I did was go on to Storyblocks, find a template that I like, I downloaded it, also grabbed some music and sound effects, brought it into Resolve, it was really easy to edit, then I exported that out and brought it into the video you're watching right now to use it as the intro for this video. In addition to all of the awesome templates that they have for DaVinci Resolve, Storyblocks also has tons of great footage that you can use, animated backgrounds, they have royalty-free music and sound effects, they've got images that you can use, and the great part about all of these assets is that you don't have to go out and create them yourself, they are high quality, awesome assets that you can just download and add to your videos to just bring your videos to that next level. So if you wanna get started with unlimited stock media downloads at one price, check out Storyblocks, hit up my link on screen here or click the link in the description. It'll bring you over to their website. You can check them out and see what they have to offer and see if it's something that may work for you. A big thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into the tips. Number three. Tip number three here is one that I've been using more and more often in the last few years, and that is some color management. Now, I'm just gonna show you some basic settings that you can use to make it a little bit easier for Resolve to know what you're working with and how to make color grading a little bit easier for you. So I'm in a blank project right here. I'm gonna come down to my project settings, a little gear at the bottom right. It's gonna open up my project settings. I'm gonna to come to my color management. And by default, mine is set up for DaVinci YRGB and the timeline color space that I'm using is Rec 709A. Now I'm on a Mac and that's why I'm using Rec 709A. But what I typically do is come to color science. I'm gonna click the little drop down. I'm gonna click on DaVinci YRGB color managed. Now you can just leave it right here. You can leave it on either SDR or HDR. 
And for your output color space, leave it on SDR Rec 709. But for me, since I'm on the Mac, I find that this doesn't give me the best result. What I like to do is uncheck the automatic color management. I'm gonna click my little drop down here. I'm gonna come down to custom. For input color space here, I'm primarily filming on a Canon C100 Mark II, and that is what the majority of my footage is in. So what I typically do is come to my input color space. I come to Canon Log, and you can pick the one that fits for your camera. For the timeline color space, I click the drop down, and for this, I use DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. And the only other thing that I change here is the output color space. I'm gonna click on that, and because I'm on a Mac, I'm gonna use Rec. 709A, and that's gonna help me get the proper color management that I need for working on a Mac. But if you're on a PC, you might wanna pick this one, Rec. 709 2.4. And that is it, I'm gonna hit save, and I'm done. And then that just tells Resolve, hey, this is the kind of raw footage I'm using, so when we get to color grading, keep that in mind. Number four. Number four. Sticking with color grading here, here's another one I use all the time that speeds up my color grading a ton. So in Resolve here, I'm gonna jump over into the color tab, and I have in my timeline just a clip I made a bunch of cuts to. Now typically, if I come into any clip, I'm just gonna pick this one right here, maybe I wanna add some nodes up here, and you know, maybe I'm making some changes, whatever I might be doing. Well, it's only changing this node right here, right? But I've got all these other clips that are the same. Now I can select them and use my middle mouse button, right, to click on the one I've already graded. It'll ask me if I want to replace the grade. Yeah, you can do all that, and it's going to work. But I like to make the change once and have it apply to all of the clips or all of the cuts that I made from a particular clip. So I'm just going to go ahead and reset all these guys. So what I like to do is use remote grades. So if you select any one of your clips here, from the same camera, maybe it's just multiple cuts, right? Which is what I have here. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna come down to use remote grades right here. I'm gonna click on that. And now we can see that all of our clips have this little, looks like a, uh, I would call it a link icon, but it doesn't look like a link. It's kind of like a little square there, a little pink square. And what that means is now I can use the remote grade, which is, means I'm gonna apply a grade to one of the clips and it's gonna apply to all of the cuts of that particular clip. So for example, if I come into this one right here and let's say I you know, boost it up a little, I drop down the blacks a little, add a little more contrast, a little extra there, a little extra uh, exposure. Now we can see that all of my clips have the little uh, rainbow icon there around the number because that remote grade is being applied to all of the clips that are in my timeline. All the cuts that I made for that one particular clip have the grade applied to it. So being that I film with you know one camera pretty much all the time, I don't need to go through and adjust every single clip. Now you can if you need to and you have different scenes and stuff, that's perfectly fine. But if you have a situation like me where you're in the same spot most of the time, I'm just gonna use the remote grades, apply it on one clip, and then boom, it's gonna apply it to everything. It's kinda like applying your color grade to a master clip, so any little clips that you have in your timeline of the master clip will have that color grade applied to it. So I love that one, I use that all the time. It's a real time saver for me. Number, Number five. five. This next one is just one that I use all the time that uh, I haven't really seen too many videos on. It's a really simple keyboard shortcut here, and that is when I need to select everything from my playhead forward. In Resolve here, right now I'm in the Edit tab, and sometimes, you know, I start working on my projects and I wanna add in something, you know, maybe like right here, and you can like window and select stuff, but if you've got a lot of tracks going on in your project, sometimes that's a little cumbersome and a little, little bit of a pain, right? So what you can do is put your playhead wherever you want to have it, right? And then we wanna select everything that's in front of the playhead. So from the playhead forward, we wanna select everything. So you can use the keyboard shortcut Alt or Option on a Mac, plus the letter Y, and it's gonna select all of your clips from your timeline playhead forward. Now a little bonus tip here for you, if you wanna select everything on the left-hand side of the playhead instead of the right-hand side of the playhead like we just did, you can use Command or Control Y, and that's gonna select everything in front of the playhead versus beyond the pay playhead. So Command Y selects everything to the left of the playhead, and now I can move just that around, and Option or Alt Y, selects everything to the right of the playhead. Really handy, I use those all the time because I'm always shuffling stuff around. Love those two keyboard shortcuts to select all my clips in my timeline 
to the right or left of the playhead. So there's five tips that I use every single day when I'm working here in Resolve that just help speed up the workflow and make things run a little bit smoother here for me in DaVinci Resolve. A big thank you to Storyblocks for sponsoring today's video. If you want to check them out, link in the description below. They're great. They've got a ton of great assets and those DaVinci Resolve templates that they have work really well and can make your videos look awesome without you having to do a whole lot of work. So thank you to Storyblocks. Guys, with that said, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I've got more tip videos coming, so stay tuned and I will see you in the next one. Peace.